Okay, well, let's get started. I uh, welcome those who are um, watching this after the live is over. And if you have any comments, feel free to go ahead and leave them. While I'm doing the demonstration, I have a hard time watching for comments. So um, rest assured, though, that I will answer them as soon as possible. This is Sue, the Soggy Stamper. I have an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and this is my Facebook Live for Friday afternoon. So, the technique that I'm going to show you is how to make a jig so that you can stamp a wreath using the Stamparatus. I started with a piece of cardstock that is 7 inches on the outside measurement, and 4 inches will be the size of the inside. And the reason I chose the seven inches is because it fits into the Stamparatus very nicely like this. Now to make this jig, you find your halfway mark. For the seven, it is three and a half inches. So you mark, make a mark and then make a line down the th this way and you do it crosswise the three and at three and a half inches, crossways like that, and then you draw lines on the diagonal. So, and then you line up, You so my square is four inches square, and you line up, you mark halfway marks on all four sides, so that's two inches on each side, and you line it up these marks with the marks that are going through the um, on the on the larger square, and you draw a line all the way around. Trace trace the square, then you turn it so that those hashtags, those marks, are on the diagonal lines, and again you draw around the four inch square. Then you cut out all the way around like that and discard this center piece. So that's what I made for the large, for a large piece. This is the four, this is a sample that I made with that putting a, so let me go ahead and what you do is, for this sample, I used the Encircled Friendship stamp set. You lay your stamp down on your square and close the door, I mean the acrylic plate, close the door on it. And then you lift it up, use your magnet, and you ink it up and you stamp. Then you rotate the card one, pe one, one notch, one way or the other, ink it up again, stamp. And you proceed all the way around the circle. Doesn't matter if you go clockwise or counterclockwise whichever works best for you. Now that stamp made a very nice size circle. Well, I wanted to see what would happen if I put it in more closely to the center. To make a smaller wreath. So I put it down there. And inked it up. Hi Linda, how are you today? Glad you were able to join me. Inked it up and stamped. I repeated the procedure by moving it like that. And I stamped again after inking it. But you notice with this particular stamp, the stems and the flowers really get all jumbled together. So you really can't see what you're getting. So if you want a smaller circle, you need to use a smaller stamp. So this was the, this was 
when I used it further out and see how nicely it kind of made a round. You can make this jig any size you want. So this was a seven inch outside edge. And then I have one that I made that was smaller. This one measures six inches. And the inside was two and seven eighths. And it pretty well fits in there. Now this stamp obviously would be way too big. If I put it down there, it'd be way too big to make a nice wreath with that. So I, instead of using the stamp, that stamp, which is from the Encircled in Friendship, I'm going to use a couple of stamps from the hand pinned petals. I'm going to use this small one. And then I wanted something that looked like green, like leaves. So I'm going to use this one. Let me show you again. This one, no, this one up here, and then these two little flowers. And I am going to stamp them both at the same time. So I'm going to put another acrylic plate into my Stamparatus to put the other stamp on. So you put your, you put your stamp down, stamp side down, pick it up with the acrylic plate, and I am going to use polished pink, one of the new in colors. It's a really stunning one. Let me slide this over a little bit. And ink up the stamp and press. Okay, so that's one. And then I'm going to, I found, I can't put this one, the leaf one, all the way around on each time I stamp because see how it extends out over the, it's bigger than the other, than the flowers. And I'm going to ink it with the soft succulent ink for a nice soft green. Slide this down a little more. And stamp it like that. Okay. So that's my first stamping. Now I'll turn it, not quite a quarter of a turn, and ink up the flowers again. You notice how the ink that got on the acrylic plate doesn't hit your stamped paper, your stamping paper. Okay, so I think I'll stamp, ink that one more time. Okay, then I'm going to turn it again. I'm not going to do the green because I don't want the green to be too thick. I'll stamp the flower flowers again. So one of the things about Stamparatus that I really like is that if it does not get enough coverage, you can stamp it again without having to worry about double images. Now I'm gonna put some leaves on there. And we'll rotate it another time. If you were to do this by freehand, you would have a very lop, I would have a very lopsided wreath. I think I'll 
let that be. Turn it one more time. And then ink the leaves. Turn this. And I think it's time for me to take some time to clean off my plates. At least a little bit because I see that my magnet is getting some ink on it and I am picking it up with my fingers which is not so cool what's perfect to use for this is are the little one inch uninked cubes They would be perfect for using with the Stamparatus. You can also get them when you um, order a paper pumpkin kit and just save those. You get quite a collection of colors as the kits come out. One last time, one last move for the flowers to complete the section of the flowers. And there we have we have a wreath. So save your templates, your jigs, so that you can make them over and over and over again. And like I say, you can make a whole variety of different sizes, whatever, whatever suits your fancy. Get these out of the way. So here's our piece that's left, but our finished piece. And before I put the ink away, I'm going to stamp a small greeting in the center of that wreath. It's the greeting from the hand penned petals that says, Feel Better Friend. I'm going to use the soft succulent ink and I'm going to orient this wreath on the diagonal so I'll just put this right in the center oops mm. ha now that was pure luck that I was able to set it back down exactly right and that's one of the advantages of the photopolymer stamps. One reason why I love them so well, much because you can actually see where you're putting your stamp. Okay, so now we need to do something with this. We've got it all done. And the finished product is This card that we're going to make. So this was a two and seven eighths inch square only because I had cut my jig with slightly less than a three inch 
inner square. Um, whatever size you want works pretty well. Use a an eleven by five and a by four and a quarter piece of blushing bride cardstock that's been scored at five and a half and folded. I cut out this piece of ev evening evergreen using this die from the fancy to set. From these ornate layers dies. This was the one that fits in here. And I'm going to put it on with stamp and seal. And I'm going to use Stampin' Dimensionals to put this piece on here. Hmm. Okay, where are my big Stampin' Dimensionals? Oh, there they are. Yeah, I was lucky to get that right on, wasn't I, Linda? But... Now that I line the card up here, it's a little crooked. I guess that's the way I meant it to be, right? At least that's what we're supposed to say when things aren't exactly the way we want them. Yeah, I meant to put it that way. But that was pure luck on my part that it lined up right. Most of the time when I'm doing a Facebook Live, that doesn't happen. So I was fortunate. Okay, so it goes like this. And to add a little bit of bling, could put a I could put a um, bow down here on the bottom of my wreath, but I've got enough going on there, so I'm going to use four of the 2021-2023 in color jewels. This does not work. A pen does not work. I needed to get my take your, take your pick. So stick one in each of the four corners. Sometimes the adhesive does not come off when the gem does. Let's see if I can get it back on. There. I did it. And there is our finished card with the Feel Better Friend and all the pretty lace around the back. You can either stamp a message on the inside or handwrite something and then be sure to sign the back of the card. I thank you for watching today. This is Sue the Saga Soggy Stamper. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at sue at soggystamper.com. My blog is www.soggystamper.com. And my online store to create to purchase product that I used in this 
uh, is Creations by Sue at StampinUp.net. I'll put this up, um, the video up on my YouTube channel, The Soggy Stamper, and I'll put on my blog the measuring directions and um, a kind of directions on how to make uh, what I used for the card and um, making the jig. So thank you so much for watching. I uh, will see you and talk to you again next Friday afternoon, um, hopefully at 3 o'clock instead of 3, uh, instead of 4.30. Hopefully I will not have uh, a conflict. Meanwhile, have a wonderful weekend. And if you have anything you would like for me to show uh, on my Facebook Lives, leave me a Leave me a text message or uh, instant message me or a comment on my um, on my Facebook page. I'll be happy to try to show you something if you want to see a technique or something like that. So have a wonderful weekend and thanks for watching. You take care. Bye bye.